I'm going to be looking at Ezekiel chapter 2 and talk about Ezekiel, a great preacher. And so in Ezekiel 2, what you have is Ezekiel's call to preach. And the Lord tells him the words to say. The Lord tells him not to be afraid. And he's going to preach to the rebellious house of Israel. He tells him what to preach, to whom to preach. He tells them why they need it. And the Lord has told us what to preach, to whom to preach, why they need it. So I want to use this chapter to describe what makes Ezekiel a great preacher and see what we can learn from it. Now look at Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 1. And he said unto me, Son of man, stand upon thy feet, and I will speak unto thee. And the Spirit entered into me when he spake unto me, and set me upon my feet, that I heard him that spake unto me. So the first thing that made Ezekiel great was the Spirit entered into him. And the Spirit entered into him, and it stood him on his feet. He tells Ezekiel, stand on your feet. And I remember listening to preaching for 8 to 10 hours a day. Back when I first got saved and imagining myself standing in front of a congregation, proclaiming the words. I must preach the gospel because there's something in me that says, stand. Just like in Ephesians 6, 14 through 18. Stand. Contrast with the flesh that's constantly telling you to sit. Be afraid. Make excuses. And tries to get out of it. And there's a tug of war match going on within you. Galatians 5, 17. The flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. You're at work. And the spirit says, Stand, go give the gospel to this guy. Go preach the gospel to this person. Tell them how Jesus Christ died on the cross for their sins, was buried and resurrected. But the flesh says, sit. Maybe tomorrow, maybe another time. So there's a war going on there. Sometimes at work, I'll, I'll hear somebody talking about the Bible. And as a quiet guy, you just want to mind your own business. But then there's something in me that says, Speak, just like it says to Ezekiel. He Just as he tells Ezekiel in uh, chapter 2 and verse 7, And thou shalt speak my words unto them, whether they will hear, or whether they, whether they will forbear, for they are most rebellious. So you see, you're going to hear people talk about the Bible, <clears throat> possibly giving a false gospel. you got to correct their false gospel. And you can't close the door of utterance. You know, Paul talks about a door of utterance in Colossians 4.3. Well, there's something in you that is afraid, the flesh. Romans 7.18. Paul says, For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For the will is present with me, but I had to perform that which is good. I find not. There's something in you afraid. That's the flesh. But the Spirit's leading stands you on your feet. Your flesh starts being afraid of men. Matthew 26, 41 says the Spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. When, you, when I get up to proclaim the words, my heart starts pounding. My voice gets shaky. I just want to be the one sitting. For something, but there's something that in you that wants to stand and it says something like, like it says in Ezekiel 2, 6, the chapter we're in, it says, Be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words. Though briars and thorns be with thee, and thou dost dwell among scorpions, be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks. <clears throat> For the past four years, I've taught a Sunday school class, and Pretty much any time I get up to teach a Sunday school class, I feel like a complete idiot. And something just says, just sit down 
and let somebody else do it, but something else says, stand. And then I'm reminded of that verse, Isaiah 55, 11, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. So the Spirit's leading. It stands you on your feet. It says, speak. That's what made Ezekiel a great preacher. He was led by the right spirit, and he stood on his feet. The next thing is the stiff-hearted need warning. In Ezekiel chapter 2, verses 3 through 4, it says, And he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that hath rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me, even unto this very day. So you see how the stiff-hearted need warning. And that's what these verses explain. Ezekiel 3 through 4, For they are impudent children and stiff-hearted. I do send thee unto them, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God. He called them stiff-hearted. The heart to the children of Israel are rebellious and stiff. He calls them impudent children. Ezekiel had to preach the gospel to soften the heart of people with the same words that made me soft. That's, and there's at least two different kinds of people that you're going after. The stiff-hearted need warning, and the first kind of those stiff-hearted people is sinners who reject the truth. In 2 Timothy 2.25, it says, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. It's like Christ denying sinners are fighting against themselves and the words of God are tough love. Tough love blows to the chest to soften the heart. Someone has to do it. And the inner man wants it to be you. And you have to make the outer man say, why not me? Acts 17.30 says, He calleth all men everywhere to repent. There isn't any other way to get to the Father outside of Jesus Christ. John 14, 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We must tell them the way. When I look at a person, I'm conscious of how this person will one day be rejoicing in the presence of the Lord or screaming in a lake of fire. The stiff-hearted need warning. The first type of stiff-hearted people is those sinners who reject the way. Those sinners who are going to be screaming in a lake of fire. The next type of stiff-hearted that need warning is the saints living for the flesh. In two, Ezekiel 2 and verse 8 it says, But thou, son of man, hear what I say unto thee. Be, thou, be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house. Open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. So 2.8 calls... Israel, a rebellious house. And our body is the house of the Holy Ghost today. Saints are causing him to walk in a rebellious house. They have forced the Holy Spirit to live in a wicked house. It isn't just the sinners who need preaching. It is also the saints who are walking in the flesh who need preaching. we got to preach the gospel to soften the hearts of the saved. We've got to preach the whole counsel of God to soften the hearts of the saved. Many saints are living for the flesh because they don't realize the value of what they have. They need to be reminded of the old story. They need to be reminded about their first love. In 2 Timothy 2.14 it says, Of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You got to get them interested in the words. The stiff hearted need warning. The sinners reject the truth. The saints are living for the flesh. They don't just need to hear 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 every time, but all the Old Testament types of the gospel. I can preach them the gospel through the types. 
That way they can be reminded of what they already know and get meat at the same time. We have to preach the gospel to them to edify them, keep them li live from living for the flesh, and as preventive maintenance to keep them walking in the Spirit. And I honestly have more of a burden to edify the saints with the word of truth and get them interested in the gospel than preaching the gospel to the lost. Ephesians 4.12 talks about how Ephesians 4.11 says he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. The body of Christ needs to be edified. They need warning as well. The stiff-hearted need warning. Sinners who reject the truth, the saints living for the flesh, they both need warning. Ezekiel was a great preacher because... He warned the stiff-hearted. The next thing is the scorpions need exposed. In Ezekiel 2.6, it says, And now, son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns be with thee. And thou dost dwell among scorpions. Be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. He called them scorpions. He said to Ezekiel, Though thou dwell among scorpions. So verse 6 explains how Ezekiel dwells among these scorpions. And you see, things you can see picture things that you don't see. Like Romans 1.20, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. The scorpions can picture unclean spirits. Revelation 9.10, for example. Ezekiel had to preach to expose the scorpions at work, that were at work. <clears throat> and obviously, I know Ezekiel wasn't preaching the same gospel that we're preaching today, that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins and was buried and resurrected. He had a different message. But he was still exposing the scorpions. And the scorpions need exposed. You had the shepherds leading sheep astray. We are dwelling among scorpions just like Ezekiel. We have false prophets, false teachers, grievous wolves. I must preach the gospel because so many are teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. Titus 1.11 The fact that there is so much bad doctrine, money-hungry televangelists, rebellious female pastors and hirelings out there should make you want to preach the gospel so bad you can't stand it. Some of the most uh, effective preaching you do could be when you're frustrated about false doctrine. And my pastor says jokingly a lot, but at the same time, somewhat serious, that uh, he can't preach unless he's angry about sin. About sin. Or he, you can't really preach until you're angry about sin. Something along those lines. Ezekiel had to preach so that the sheep know there's still a preacher among them. Ezekiel 2.5, it says, And Ezekiel 2.5, And they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house, yet shall know that there hath been a prophet among them. So, we must preach the gospel so that the sheep know there is still a preacher among them. Preaching the word from a sincere heart goes a lot f further than feigned words that make merchandise of you, Second Peter 2, 3. We must preach the gospel to show the sheep that preaching the word of God is not for making a living. John 10, 12-13 but he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is an hireling and careth not for the sheep. See, the hireling doesn't care about the sheep. He's leading sheep astray. He's a false shepherd leading sheep astray. He's a scorpion 
that needs exposed. So you got the shepherds leading sheep astray, our so-called shepherds, and then you got spiritual wickedness in high places. The scorpions can picture unclean spirits. We visibly see the false teachers and pastors that are false teachers and pastors, but we are really wrestling against the spiritual wickedness behind these false pastors and teachers. So we got to preach the gospel, preach the whole counsel of God to fight off spiritual wickedness with the words. 2 Corinthians 10, 4. 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 4 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You see, even when I think the lesson isn't having an effect, which is pretty much every time, I remind myself I'm still driving unclean spirits away. I must preach the gospel. I got to give out the whole counsel of God. I got to give out the words to ward off the enemies in high places. Even if the people in your congregation or in your class aren't really paying attention or really caring about what you're saying, you're still driving unclean spirits away. Just like Jesus used the scriptures to cause the devil to leave for a season, Luke 4, 13. I must preach the gospel because the works of darkness need reproved. And the main force behind the wicked things in churches are those principalities and powers, Ephesians six twelve, And churches today are having fellowship with these unfruitful works of darkness. Ephesians 5.11 says, Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. The preaching of the gospel reproves them. It reminds them of how the Lord made a show of them openly and triumphed over them in it. Colossians 2.15 We've got to preach the gospel to give a reminder to the forces of darkness, even though people have their minds blinded the Word of God still has an effect on the spirit world even when nobody's listening. The unclean spirits are listening. Those scorpions are listening. They know it's exposing them. They know, the, they know the right doctrine. They came to Jesus and said, Thou Son of God Most High, art thou come to torment us before the time? The devils believe and tremble. They know they're being exposed. It gives them a good reminder that the time of their torment is coming. Matthew eight twenty nine. Ezekiel was a great preacher because the scorpions need exposed and he did it. The shepherds were leading sheep astray. He pointed it out. There was spiritual wickedness in high places and he was aware of the spirit world. He was aware of what was going on. Ezekiel was a great preacher because of the spread out book. Look at Ezekiel 2.10. In Ezekiel 2 and verse 10, it says, <clears throat> well, look at verse 9. It says, Ezekiel 2, 9, And when I looked, behold, an hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein, and he spread it before me, and it was written within and without, and there was written therein lamentations and mourning and woe. So a hand gives Ezekiel the roll of a book. And spreads it out before him. It's a spread out book. God has also spread out the book in front of me and you. We got to preach the words because this book is too good not to preach the words. The book has intrigued me, fascinated me, amazed me, consumed me. We got to preach the words because of the spread out book. We're struck by the book. We're struck by it. The Bible is so full of meat Stories, facts, interesting doctrines. Every verse has at least three applications. This makes it to where it never grows old. In 1 Peter 1.25, it says, For you are a sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. That's what brings the people back. It's the words. You get struck by the book. They left their first love. You just strike them with the book. It's full of stuff to bring them back. Ever since I got saved, I fell in love with Bible doctrine. I'm so amazed by the typology, the numerology, 
the fascinating stories of the Old Testament that illustrate the doctrines of the New Testament. You got to preach the words because you're so amazed by the book that you want everyone else to be amazed and awestruck by the book. Psalm 119, 161. says, Princes have persecuted me without a cause, but my heart standeth in awe of thy word. Have you been struck by the book? Have you found out that it's not just black words on white paper, but that it actually is a live, lively oracles it calls itself. The Bible's alive. Somebody said, they think it might get up and walk around at night when they're asleep. Uh, Christians haven't been struck by the book, most of them. They're saved, but they just haven't been struck by the book. Ezekiel was a great preacher because he got struck by the book. He ate the words. You got to preach the gospel, get people amazed with the book. Your main burden should be to get people amazed with the scriptures. If you can preach the gospel and get someone interested in the word, if you can preach the words and get someone interested in the words, then that is the second greatest thing outside of preaching the gospel to get them saved. When a man talks about, what a man talks about the most is what he loves. And what a man has in his heart will come out of his mouth. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Matthew 12, 34. When people want to strike up a conversation with me, they start talking about the Bible. I must preach the gospel because I love the book more than anything. We're struck by the book. I've been struck by the book, which is full of lamentations, mourning, and woe. Ezekiel 2.10. Someone has to give out the negative truths that everyone hates to hear about. So, Ezekiel a great preacher because of the spread out book. He was struck by the book. And the scriptures go in, they must come out. He was struck by the book, and scriptures go in, they must come out. With all the reading, studying, meditating, memorizing, that goes along with loving the scriptures, you're going to want an outlet. The word goes in your heart, it's got to come out. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. On the road to Emmaus, they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us while they talked with us by the way, and while he opened to us the scriptures? Jeremiah said, Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in mine heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. Ezekiel had to preach the words because he was eager to spread to others what God had shown him in that role, in that book. I believe they are, going, they are cheating themselves out of the most amazing thing in the world when they don't get in the book and stay in it and tell others about it. So why must we preach the gospel? What makes Ezekiel a great preacher? I believe it's the, the Lord's will for his life to get that spread out book that was put before him. The Spirit led him that way. The Spirit stood him upon his feet. The saints and the sinners need the word pumped into them. So that's what he did. And Ezekiel was the mouthpiece. The unclean spirits know they have but a short time, and they're the scorpions that need reproved. So there is a holy Bible with 66 books that is so amazing that you can't help but proclaim the words inside of it. And we've got much more than Ezekiel had, much more words than Ezekiel had. And you got the sealing of the Holy Spirit that Ezekiel didn't have. You've got a complete Bible that Ezekiel didn't have spread out before you. And with great power comes great responsibility. 